Today's an exciting day because we're gonna work on the Comet. And honestly, it's gonna all be about teardown and figuring out whether this thing has a flat tappet cam or a hydraulic roller. Now, if it has a flat tappet, we're gonna save some money, but we're gonna have to really cross our fingers during the break-in process, and it may limit us a little bit with how much power we can make safely. If it's a hydraulic roller, it's gonna cost a little bit more money, but the benefit here is no break-in, and honestly, we probably will have more cam options. So let's pop the hood, throw the time-lapse on, start tearing this thing apart, and figure out what we have. There's really no rhyme or reason here. You can kind of start wherever you want. Um, you could also remove the hood if you need more space, but honestly, there was tons of room. So we jacked the car up, got a tray under it, and started getting the coolant out. Because first things first, you really want to get the radiator and fan out of the way. That'll give you a lot more access to everything else, and you can start seeing what else needs to come apart. Okay, let's hit pause on the time-lapse because there's a couple things I wanna point out. A couple little interesting things that I found as I was diving through this. So first things first, I highly recommend get a lot of space in your workbench so you can lay everything out. I always like to try and keep things together as well as best I can. So, so basically, if you don't have to take it apart, don't. Why take the carburetor off yet? Leave everything connected if you can and bag and tag everything. But here's what I wanna show you. So got the harmonic balancer over here and this is the pulley that goes on here and basically all you need to know is there's it's like a dual pulley but i'm only using one because this car doesn't have any power accessories just water pump the crank pulley and an alternator that's it this is the water pump pulley it's the same diameter as the crank pulley basically i was trying to take this off and i couldn't until i took the crank pulley off and what that tells me is like for reference like here's like a drive for like a serpentine belt not for this car but if you look at the alternator for example the alternator you know way smaller and that's pretty common but normally your water pump pulley is like somewhere in between this means i was way under driving like way under driving the water pump for no reason and if you go over here and look at my radiator it's a pretty small radiator so like I was kind of on the verge of overheating in the summertime. I'm also at elevation here in Salt Lake City. And I just assumed it was because of the elevation. I didn't have a fan shroud. You know, I've got this like old, you know, kind of like chop your finger off fan. But I think part of the problem was I was way under driving it, right? So I'm gonna have to swap this out for something and I'll have to get a new belt too, which means my belt will be even smaller. Look how tiny this belt is. Anyways, that was one of the funny things I saw when I was doing this. Um, we'll flip the time lapse around and keep going and I'll try and stop and show you a couple more things along the way. Before we dive into the new stuff, you're gonna see some of the things I just talked about. So right off the bat, straight away, get the battery out of the car. You don't wanna be arcing a wrench across the battery terminals or accidentally turning the motor over. So get that pulled out. Like I said, get all the fluids drained, get the radiator pulled. You'll see me fighting here with the pulleys for a second. Eventually I get that all sorted out. Um, whenever you're dealing with like a front timing cover or accessory brackets, a lot of times there are long bolts and short bolts. If you're not sure, mark them so you know where they go. Okay, at this point, now we wanna make sure we've got the motor at top dead center. You'll see me get close and then we'll bar everything over. I did pull all of the spark plugs out to make it super easy. If it's a stick shift car or if it's an automatic, make sure you put it into neutral. That makes it way easier. Um, once you got it at top dead center, you can pull the distributor out, then go ahead, pull your intake off. Now we're starting to make some progress. Um, at this point, we kind of double team it. We pull all the rocker arms, all the push rods out and we are getting very close to pulling the heads off. Now, I didn't have the right tool um, to get the harmonic balancer off, so that's gonna wait till the very end. Uh, but I went ahead and broke loose all the head bolts, kind of took my time, pulled all those out. My wife came by, she said hi, and then we're gonna go ahead here in a second and pull the cylinder heads off. Um, at this point, if you've got a keen eye, you can tell whether or not this is a roller motor or not, but don't worry, we will stop here in a second and I'll talk you through everything that I found. I actually know exactly what motor this is. Okay, you're on the home stretch now. I did not have a harmonic balancer puller, so I had to run to O'Reilly and rent that. But once you get the harmonic balancer off, it's time to pull your fuel pump, pull all the bolts out of your timing cover and the four in the front that attach to the oil pan and you can pull your cover off and now you're basically done. One of the other things I figured out was that basically nothing was on here tight. So, um, you know, when you get a car like this, like I did basic maintenance, but I didn't go and check every single bolt. 
like all the header bolts loose, the intake manifold bolts loose, the valve cover gasket bolts loose. Like this thing made decent idle vacuum. <laughs> it would have made way better if I would have had everything sealed up correctly. So that was just like totally hilarious to me. Um, but the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm gonna pull the cover off and show you in here, I'm gonna show you two big things on what I found out and how to figure out kind of what year you have. I'll show you the cylinder heads that came off. We'll talk about those a little bit too. All right, let's go ahead and pull this off. So now it is fully disassembled right now, but these bolts right here and here held on the tray, the tray that I've lost. Oh, here it is right here. Held on this tray. Now you probably know what this tray is for. This tray is what holds the little dog bones in place that hold your roller lifters. So check this out right here. This is, in case you are unfamiliar, this is a hydraulic roller lifter. Basically hydraulic meaning that it fills up with oil and there's a little plunger in here, that's the hydraulic side. And here is the roller. So a flat tappet would, you know, hydraulic flat tappet would look like this, but this other side would be totally flat. It would kind of look like that almost no roller. So this is super cool. It's a hydraulic roller motor. Um, you just heard me mention the dog bones a second ago. If you're curious about what those are, those are these little guys. These look like dog bones. So what do these do? And what does that tray do? But basically what happens is um, the lifters go down into the lifter bores right here, but because it's a roller, unlike a hydraulic flat tappet, which can rotate and should rotate, you don't want your rollers to move because if they turn 90 degrees, if the lifter was to turn 90 degrees, you would totally destroy your cam. So basically the lifters have, um, there's like a little flat section here. It's probably easier if I just drop one in and show you. So you put this down in the bore like so, that goes in there like that. And there's this little flat right here, right? So what happens is the dog bone sits here like this and it keeps it from spinning. And then those little plates that you saw that goes on top, that sits down, bolts in right here and holds that in place. And that's what keeps your, um, your hydraulic roller lifters from spinning. Now, you've probably seen like a link bar lifter where there's two lifters that have like a link that holds them together. I'll probably show you a picture of one here in a second. Um, that's like if you are modifying, you know, a non-roller motor to be a roller motor where it doesn't have this kind of tray set up but this is pretty common. So what this means is I do have a hydraulic roller motor, which means this is a hydraulic roller cam, um, which also means that you have to make sure that you get the correct uh, drive gear for your distributor. But basically what this means is this specific motor um, is a non-HO, um, but it is a roller motor. And what I mean by non-HO is the firing order is the older style 302, not the HO4 that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, and you can read off the firing order here. So the non-HO firing order, anyways, anyways, I'll, I'll put it down there in the description, but this is a non-HO motor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an HO cam in here. And all you need to do is if you install an HO cam, um, then, you don't have to change anything else other than the firing order for the plugs, and you can turn this into an HO motor. Okay, so what else do I wanna show you? Well, let me show you the cylinder heads that came out of these. Um, and the big thing with these heads is, well, yeah, let me show you the heads first. We'll talk about that for just a second, and I'll flip it around, go back to the motor. I wanna show you something to tell you exactly what, I know exactly what year this is out of, and we'll talk about this in a second. Flip the camera around, and I'll show you the heads. Okay. So these are the cylinder heads right here. Um, this is an E6 SE head. And basically these things have 68 cc chambers. Um, and what, that, what I mean by that is the combustion chamber in here is 68 cc's. The heads that I purchased are 58 cc's. And here's the big thing. So not only would a 58 cc raise the Compression ratio, but remember how I said that I knew exactly what year motor this was? The only year that had a flat top piston, now it's got a tiny little dish right here, but no valve reliefs, flat top piston is an 86 
So with a flat top piston and going from a 68 to a 58 cc head, I'm gonna see a huge bump in compression. It's probably going to be around 10 and a quarter to one, 10.3 to one. So huge jump in compression. I might be a little limited on what style of cam I can run just because of the lift and duration. I don't wanna run them into the pistons. I'll have to check piston to valve clearance. Um, but that is pretty cool because even though I might not be able to run some big rowdy cam, making over 10 to one compression is really going to wake this thing up. So big takeaways here, happy to know, I'm gonna probably wind up spending a little bit more money, but I'm not gonna have to do the break-in because it is a roller motor, which is awesome. So this is a roller motor out of an 86 something. It's not out of a Mustang because it's in a non-HO. Um, the other thing I was able to find out is this thing has been pretty well maintained. We didn't find any kind of crazy sludge or anything like that in the motor, which tells me that the oil has been changed regularly throughout its life. Um, I think the, the wires on it say 1990. So it looks like, I think those wires have been on this car since 1990, but it still seems to run fine. Don't worry. I'll probably put new wires on it. We'll see. Um, let me flip around and show you the plugs real quick. And again, I did tune this thing, um, you know, when I first got it and put new plugs in it. But again, if you've got like some crazy blow by or stuff like that, a lot of times you can notice that on your plugs. Let me flip it around and show you the plugs. This thing is in really good shape. So here are all the plugs that came out of it. And basically, I mean, look at these things. It looks like they weren't even run. They've got like a little bit of brown, you know, honestly, they're probably a little bit lean. And I'm trying to read the strap here to try and tell you what the timing is like. Timing is probably pretty spot on. Um, anyways, we'll be tuning this everything, you know, after the fact. I won't be able to run these plugs again. These are like an Iridium or something like that. But the big takeaway is the engine is healthy because if the engine wasn't healthy, a lot of times when you pull the valve covers off, you can find all kinds of gunk and crap in there. And then when you pull the intake off, a lot of times you'll find all kinds of gunk and grime in the, uh, the valley. But I mean, there's like a little bit of gunk, you know, here and here, but really not bad at all. So this engine was pretty well maintained. Uh, now coming from a Chevy guy, seeing this amount of slop in the timing chain, I don't love. Um, it is a double double roller chain, um, but it will be getting a new timing chain and sprockets and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, it came apart really easy because nothing was super tight and we've got everything laid out on the bench here. We're gonna be saying bye to this kind of no-name brand uh, intake manifold for that single plane. I'm also gonna check the numbers on this fuel pump. It looks relatively new, but I do wanna see how many gallons per hour it flows. It might be not enough um, for what we plan to do. We'll just have to see. And then I'm on the fence of whether or not I want to go to an electric fan on this. So I've got to decide on that. Um, I'll clean up some of this stuff. I've got the timing cover down here. I'll clean the timing cover up. I picked up some uh, paint here from the store. So I'm going to paint a couple of things and uh, just make it a little bit nicer when it goes all back together. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, all in all, Pretty excited with how this came apart. I did find one spot where my battery was bumping up against right here. You can see where the battery was banging up against the uh, front radiator support, so I'll have to fix that. But uh, other than that, she is all a part. I've got an idea when I go to put heads on here or the heads and headers, I may install the headers to the heads and then try and drop them in. Otherwise, I've heard you've got to lift the motor up off the motor mounts, which right now is not difficult. Um, but when you put the heads on there, you don't have quite as much room. So uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll flip the camera around. We can wrap this video up. Hey, thanks for listening to me, you know, ramble on here, but hopefully this was interesting to you. I mean, again, if this is your first time tuning into this video, the whole point is we are going to try and get the power to weight ratio of this 86.5.0 motor up to snuff with what would be not in its current form because this thing has a lot more power, but when it was bone stock, the stock power to weight ratio of a new Mustang. That's a Mach 1, so it's also a little bit of a taller order. Um, so yeah, we're basically gonna throw these some go-fast parts at it. Um, in the next video, we'll probably clean things up, talk about part selection a little bit. But for right now, we're probably just gonna wrap it up. And um, the big takeaways here are the motor's healthy, and we know it's a roller motor, so we just gotta pick a roller cam and the rest of the parts, and we'll get this thing cleaned up and keep working on it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can learn more. We will go part by part, step by step, as we get this thing built back up, as we do every time 
on Truck and Roll. See you next time.